So for problem number two, we want to compute the lengths of vector u, vector v, and vector w at first, and then we want to check the Schwartz inequalities. So um, to compute the length of each vector, we're just going to think of it as using the distance formula. Um, so for example, vector v, the vector 3, 4, that means going 1, 2, 3 in one direction, we can maybe call that the x direction, and 4 in the other direction, so that's going to be 4, 2, 3, 4. That would be 4 on the y. So our vector u is comprised of um, this component here, sorry, of a vector v plus this component. And now this is just a classic right triangle where we have the 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to um, this length, the length v squared, because the length v would go from the origin all the way there. And this is a classic 3, 4, 5 triangle, so we know that the length of v is just going to be equal to 5. Um, so we can think of just using the Pythagorean theorem to find the, the length of it. Um, so that's v. Now let's do w. Um, so if we were to scale this for w, we could think of going um, 6 in the x direction, 8 in the y direction, and then the length of w would be the one that connected this. So this would be, this would be w. And so for w, we're going to have 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to be equal to w squared. And um, that is also just a multiple of the 3, 4, 5 triangles. So that's just going to be 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to be equal to 10 squared. So from here, we can see that w has to be equal to 10, the length of it. And lastly, let's find u. So for u, we have minus 0 0.6 squared plus 0 0.8 squared. Um, and that's going to give us u squared. So if we plug that into our calculator, we're going to see that u, um, the value of it, is just going to be 1. So u is just going to be 1. So over here, we have the length of all the vectors. The length of u is 1, the length of v is 5, and the length of w is 10. And once more, we can just um, find that just using the Pythagorean theorem. We can think of it as just being um, the square of both components is equal to the square of the length of um, the vector. So now we want to check the Schwartz inequality, and the Schwartz inequality says that the um, absolute value of the dot product between any two vectors is less than or equal to um, the length of those two vectors multiplied. And the reason that this works is because the dot product measures how much those two vectors are pointing in the same direction. So for example, if my vector, if I have some vector v1 pointing in this direction and another vector v2 pointing in that direction, this dot product, so v1 dot v2, would be equal to zero. Uh, because we can see that they're going in totally opposite directions. Whereas if I had v1, um, pointing in the same direction here, well, then the dot product would be the maximum product between them. It would just be v1 times v2 because they're pointing 100% in the same direction. So since the dot product is just a measure of the directionality between the two vectors, at most it can be 100% in the same direction, which just means um, v1 times v2. So at most they're equal, and at least it's going to be zero because that just means pointing in totally opposite directions. So um, without further ado, let's find u dot v. So um, u dot v, to find it, since we're just measuring the directionality of the two vectors, we have to see how they interact in one of their dimensions. So that's going to be 3 times minus 0 0.6, and then plus their interaction in the other dimension, which is 4 times um, 0 0.8. So if we do that calculation, that's going to give us 7 fifths. Um, and so the absolute value of u dot v is just the absolute value of 7 fifths, which is 7 fifths itself. So we have that the absolute value of u dot v is going to be equal to 7 fifths, and the length of u times 
times um, the length of v. Well, the length of u we found is 1, and the length of v we found is 5. So it's going to be 1 times 5, which is just the same thing as 5. So we can, in fact, confirm that 7 fifths is less than or equal to 5. So um, the inequality does stand for these vectors. I mean, it stands for all vectors, but we've confirmed it in this um, specific situation. Okay, so now let's do the next one, which is going to be, um, we want v dot w. So v dot w, so we do v dot w, we're going to um, take the interactions of their first component, so that's going to be 3 times 8, and then plus the interactions between the second components, so that's going to be plus 4 times 6. Um, and so if we plug that into our calculator, let's see, that's going to be 24 plus 24, so that's going to be 48. Um, and so the absolute value of that is just the absolute value of 48, which is 48 itself. So in this case, we have that v dot w, the absolute value is 48, and then the length of v times the length of w, if we do this, well, the length of the length of v is 5, and the length of w is 10. So that's going to be 5 times 10, which is 50. So we can here confirm that 48, which is the dot product, is less than or equal to 50, and so that does check out. And actually, you can see here what the what this tells us about the two vectors. So because you can see that the dot product, the absolute value, is very close to the multiplication, it means that they are um, very close to being in the same direction. They're very, um, they're not totally in the same direction, but it's, um, they're very, very close. Whereas with this one here, you can see that 7 fifths is way less than 5, so that means that they are um, much further apart then they are closer to each other. So that's what the dot product tells us. It just tells us um, relative to the size of the multiplication, how much they're pointing in the same direction. And that is it for problem number two.